Uh, welcome back everybody to another Cools Reviews. Uh, we figured we'd come together and watch a documentary. And of course we got to go back to our well of BBC. Uh, because BBC mm -hmm. definitely is the best documentary source up until we can get some more money and you know, deliver some really top-notch documentaries. But no, I think, I think this was a good documentary. There's actually not a ton as far as Britannic is concerned. Uh, I think I've seen a few, but this is definitely probably the best one out there. So joining me tonight, as usual, is uh, Mr. Andrew on Hi. my right and Mr. Sam on my left. Hello. My name's Keegan. I guess I didn't say that. All right, so for those of you that don't know, the Britannic uh, had struck a mine and sank relatively fast in about 55 minutes, which was a lot faster than the Titanic, which sank in two and a half minutes hours. Yeah, it's and basically three times faster. Three times faster almost and uh, you know it was actually it was being built as the Titanic sank so they actually had chances to come back in and really kind of retrofit it and give it a lot more safety precautions so it was kind of always like this big like wonder like why did it sink so fast? It was supposed to be the most unsinkable and that sink, sank faster than Sank faster than the Titanic, not faster than like the Lusitania. It sank awfully fast. I mean, that was pretty terrible. Um, there was a lot of stories for a lot of years that it had been torpedoed, um, but I'm pretty sure at this point everyone's put that to rest, um, including this documentary. Obviously, they used the mine, uh, which just makes more sense. Uh, no one really saw a torpedo outside of I think two people, um, but. Again, those two people saw it on different sides, coming from different trajectories, so it didn't really line up. Um, and a lot of times, especially during the war, people saw, you know, submarines everywhere. You know, you go into the Great Lakes, people were seeing submarines and stuff like that. Uh, there was 30 people that lost their lives, all of which were killed because of the propeller. Um, they went into lifeboats early, and they were sucked up into it, and, you know, People just don't stand a chance against machinery like that. You know? Yeah, a 20 foot, 24 foot blade just. Yeah, going. full speed. Yeah, full speed. I mean, and they're sharp too. Like, we, oh, de yeah. we definitely don't stand a chance. So that's kind of the backstory. Um, and this one, I really do enjoy the documentary because while they don't really have a lot of the people per se, they have close relatives. Um, and sometimes they do have like, you know, little voice recordings or stuff from interviews. But I do like when they tell it from the people's point of view, especially, you know, from people that you really don't know about. Um, there's some people on here that had been on the Titanic as well. I mean, two of these, two of the five main people were on the Titanic. So, you know, Archie and Violet, Miss Jessica. So that's that's the basic. Uh, so as most of these documentaries, we're just gonna, I guess, talk about things we learn. So, uh, Andrew, anything you learned from this one? Yeah, how people panic and communication. Yeah, the lack of communication again is what you know, and panic is what led to the dust by the propellers. Because yep. instead of waiting for the, you know. Let's abandon ship from the captain. Uh, they decided to take it in their own hands, their fate, and you know, it did not work out very well. And, and it's tragic. Sam, what did you learn from this one? Stop naming your boat, boats unsinkable. Because <laughs> apparently, if you claim it to be unsinkable, it ends up sinking. Yeah, and I think a lot of it was different with this one. But the Titanic, I do believe a lot of it was more press related rather than the actual ship people. Um, but you know, they kind of bought into it towards before they had sailed. But yeah, anytime you name something, it does seem like you could be tempting fate for sure. So the thing that I learned when I first watched this was just, I guess, the story of Sheila Macbeth. Uh, she had lived to 103. She was one of the nurses on board the Britannic, and you know later in her life they actually were filming a documentary, and she got the chance to go back out. Um, she brought 
this head, like a headpiece of a chair, like the top of it, back to the scene, back to the island, and then she actually went um, on a submarine down to the wreckage. Um, she was helicoptered out there, and she ended up placing flowers, and if this sounds familiar, it's because it's pretty much rose from Titanic 1997. So, you know, as much as I don't like that movie, it's something kind of cool because it's yeah. kind of, you know, like her family said, they believe, you know, Rose was kind of built off of her story uh, because that did happen a few years before Titanic, you know, went into production and came out. So I found that interesting and at one point we would be interested in maybe doing an episode on the three sister ships, you know, the Titanic, Britannic, and the only one that survived the Olympic. So hopefully soon in the future we'll get to that one. Uh, so now we're going to get to the part where we uh, rank and review it a little bit. So Andrew, what do you what do you say this one? I give it an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? At least. At least? Okay. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was cool. What about you, Sam? No, I'd do a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10 too. I don't remember what I gave the Lusitania one. But I think this is my highest rated one. I do enjoy it the most out of the three ship ones we've done so far. Yeah. And it does have an interesting setup where it is timed and it has the 55 minutes to sinking. And it has that countdown pop up every once in a while. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. It was kind of a unique take. And the way the, the, they use the actors and stuff like that is more of an interview. Yeah, the use of living historians was definitely very neat. Um, definitely very, like, almost theatrical-like, not as in a movie, but uh, more as, like, a stage or a theater performance. Yeah. Um, you know, they definitely got into character, and I enjoyed them, you know, recollecting on, like, you know, what happened in their stories. Yeah, I definitely found that pretty, pretty entertaining myself as well. It was really good. Yeah. I definitely recommend it. Yeah, I would as well. Yeah, so at some point, like I said, we're going to get to some more Britannic stuff. Uh, I know at some point we're going to do our top 10 Titanic movies. That's not going to be topped out by the Titanic 1997. Oh, we're going to make it that way this time. I, I don't think we are. I don't think anyone's going to make it that way. Hey, Andrew. Uh, why not? <laughs> I'm going to override this. Use my my override key going. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, at some point, hopefully we get to telling the story soon of the three sister ships. We'd definitely be entertaining and we enjoy like using some scale models and stuff. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, but if you want to see more Cool's reviews, uh, click that link over Andrew. If you want to see more from us here at Cool's Paranormal, Click that link right there. You can see me and Sam go up to Canyon City at a museum. If you want to see more of this, don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. subscribe. And switch that notification bell from personalized to all if you want to be notified on all of our videos. And let us know, have you seen this documentary? And which Titanic movie do you think should be number one?